All right, Tubes, what is going on? We got something pretty interesting here for you today. We're going to be working on my O2 Ranger, which I probably haven't made a video of in quite some time. I've been kind of giving all the love to the O6 over there. So uh, it's about time we work on the O2 here. Now, something kind of interesting about this truck, I'll just show you guys real quick, even though it's not the, uh, the main attraction of this video. Uh, this truck's actually supercharged. Uh, I did this about a year and a half, maybe two years ago. Kind of just as a on a whim project, I got the uh, lower manifold kit from a buddy of mine and bought this uh, blower off an old uh, Ford Thunderbird and kind of just throw it together. And it's not the most practical thing in the world, it's not like a super fast truck or anything, but it's more about just the amusing factor of having a roots blower on a pickup truck. It's pretty funny. But anyway, let me show you guys, uh, let me show you guys what the problem is. Basically, I've been having this problem where whenever I start the truck up, originally it was just when it's cold, but now it's really anytime I start the truck up, it starts super, super rough. It barely even starts at all. You know, it like cranks, it wants to start, but it doesn't actually start. You got to pump the gas. And it just is very, very difficult to start. And there's you know, like a huge like cloud of smoke that comes out when it uh, first starts up. As you can see, it's like super rich on the uh, wide band O2 sensor. It's like pretty much as rich as you can get, as rich as the uh, gauge goes anyway. Now fortunately, I've actually got a check engine light code, actually two of them, uh, to help kind of point me into the direction of what possibly might be causing this problem. Sometimes you have these, these issues and you don't have a check engine light, in which case it's more difficult. But in my case, I do have codes, two of them. P0118, which is coolant temperature circuit high input, and P0125, which is insufficient coolant temperature for closed loop operation. Now a lot of you guys are probably wondering what exactly those codes mean if you have the same code on your vehicle. So I think the best thing for me to do here is just to give you like a real quick maybe 30 second to 1 minute primer on engine coolant temperature sensors and what they do for your vehicle and that way you can kind of better understand uh, why they would be causing this problem and uh, how you can fix it. So pretty much and maybe even not pretty much and just 100% every uh, vehicle that has fuel injection has an engine coolant temperature sensor and it can be located in a variety of different places on my truck you can see there's actually two of them one there one there right next to each other in the thermostat housing and what they do is they measure the temperature of the vehicle's coolant they can do this in a variety of ways but most of the time they just change resistance as the temperature increases or decreases and then the computer's ECU is able to convert that into uh, actual value for temperature. Now given that data of what the uh, engine temperature is, the ECU is able to figure out a variety of things, one of them being what the mixture needs to be a cold start, because when you start your vehicle up cold, the mixture needs to be enriched, that's why back in the old days you would have a choke. Of course nowadays that is accomplished with the uh, fuel injection system and it just, in the injector pulse is varied such that you get a richer fuel mixture but it needs to know how cold it is in order to figure out how rich the mixture needs to be. So if it can't tell that, then it appears, at least in this case, it's just making the mixture as rich as it possibly could be, uh, thus creating a very difficult starting condition. Now similarly, uh, when you have a hot start condition and you're starting a vehicle when it's warm, uh, the ECU is also going to adjust the mixture accordingly uh, in order to get the easiest possible start. But if your ECU isn't getting a signal or perhaps it's getting an incorrect signal from the temperature sensor, then it's not going to be able to set the correct mixture for a hot start condition and therefore you're also going to have problems with hot starts, which is exactly the problem I'm having. Pretty much now, anytime I start the vehicle, it's difficult to start. Once it's running, it's alright, but it's all, it's all in the start where I'm having all my issues. So with all that being said, at this point in time, I'm betting on either one of two things being wrong with this particular truck. Either the coolant temperature sensor itself is bad, or there's a problem somewhere in the signal path from the sensor to the ECU. So that could be dirty connection, could be bad wiring, uh, or something, something like that between the sensor and the ECU. But considering the age of this truck, it's almost 20 years old, and it's got very close to 200,000 miles on it, I would not be at all surprised if the sensor itself is just 
deteriorated. So what my game plan here is, is I'm going to do two things actually. First, I'm going to plug my scanner in and see if I can get a reading from both sensors and compare the two and then I'll be able to know if one is uh, causing the problem because it's giving a bad reading. Uh, but since some of you may not have a scanner that's capable of doing that, I'm also going to just take the sensors out and I'll show you how to test them too. And hopefully we can figure out what's going on here. Alright, we're in the truck now and I've got it warming up here and as you can see the uh, temperature gauge on the dash is just about halfway and that's pretty much where it sits when it's warmed up. Alright, so I got my uh, Altel Maxicon MK808 hooked up here and this is kind of an advanced diagnostic tool. It's a lot, lot better than my little Bluetooth machine because you can read a lot more data. But what we're looking at right now is our engine coolant temperature and as you can see it's reading about 12 degrees Celsius. Now that's probably about 55, 56 degrees Fahrenheit and that's actually below ambient temperature right now. So given the fact that we have an engine that's at operating temperature but the sensor that's actually reading a value lower than ambient air temperature, I think we found our problem. Now to do a little experiment here and figure out if our issue is the sensor itself or the connector or wiring or something other than the sensor, I went ahead and unplugged the connector here. So if we take a look at our reading now, with the sensor unplugged, we're getting a reading of negative 40. So given that, I'm thinking that our problem is the sensor itself. If that value remained unchanged and stayed at 7 or, what was it, 11 or 12 degrees Celsius, even with the sensor unplugged, then I would suspect the wiring. But since we're getting different reading plugged and unplugged, and an incorrect reading while it is plugged in, I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to say that we need to replace this sensor. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to take the sensor out. Now this is kind of a general video. This isn't really meant to be uh, a Ford Ranger specific. Uh, and even if it was, this is clearly not a stock Ford Ranger anymore. So I don't know how helpful this would be. But just to show you guys, uh, you know, what you have to do is you got to locate your coolant temperature sensor wherever it's at. And I'm assuming you have if you've made it this far. Sometimes they go into the block. Sometimes they go into the head. As you can see on my engine, it actually goes into the back of the thermostat housing. But either way, first you got to locate it. Then you have to figure out how they're actually held in. And now on some vehicles, they're just threaded in. And you just have to spin them out with a wrench. On this particular truck there, it's actually held in with a little uh, C-clip. You can see down at the bottom right there, there's that little uh, metal piece. But what it does is it just goes through a little slot in the thermostat housing that engages with a groove in the actual sensor itself. And that's what keeps it held in. Now just in case you guys do have a Ford Ranger and you really want to see how it's actually done, I'll put a link in the description because I did the video uh, a couple years back where I actually replaced that whole thermostat housing and pretty much the process of getting to it, which involves taking off the throttle body and all that, uh, is the same thing you'd have to do to get to these sensors anyway. Uh, and then I also showed how that clip works and a little tri trick to get it in and out. So if you do have a Ranger, check the description. Uh, otherwise, I'm just going to get this thing out of here and we'll go in the garage and test her out. Alright, so we're inside now. I'm going to show you guys how you can test these sensors with a multimeter if you don't have a fancy OBD2 adapter. Now, you could probably argue that for the cost of one of these multimeters, if you didn't have that, you could just buy a uh, Bluetooth adapter. They're pretty cheap. I'll, I'll put some links in, uh, in the description for Amazon if you guys want to get one. But either way, if, if for whatever reason you guys want to test them this way uh, or you just want to see how these actually work, uh, pay attention here, otherwise you guys can just skip forward. This is just an old school analog electrical meter. Uh, you could use a digital one too, either one will work. And what I've done is I've set it to the resistance setting. I've got it on the highest setting, which is 1K. And I've just hooked it up. This sensor and pretty much any sensor you're going to deal with is just going to have two wires. Sometimes it might have three. If it has three, you might have to experiment, but it's probably the outside too. And I've just hooked one uh, lead of the multimeter to one pin and one lead to the other pin. Now what's going to happen here is the way this sensor works is it's just it's a thermistor. And what that means is it's a resistor that changes resistance with temperature. Now all resistors actually do this to a certain degree, but generally that's not a, a desirable condition. So they're, they're limited in how much that they range. However, this resistor is designed to do that. So as the temperature increases, the resistance will actually decrease. So let's dip this in some hot water here and let's take a look at our meter and watch what happens. And as you can see, our resistance is decreasing.
down to about 50 ohms now and it's starting to slow down it's still going but maybe slowing down now the rate at which that decreases and also the point at which it stops decreasing is just going to depend on the water if you have very hot water it's going to decrease a lot faster and the resistance will probably get even closer to zero but right now with this water whatever the water temperature is i'd say it's probably probably about 120 degrees thereabouts uh, it appears to have stopped at about 25 30 ohms something like that all right, so I'm, I'm uh, in the process of testing the old one now just to see, and I can tell there's a problem already because I'm actually not getting any resistance uh, with this thing hooked up. It's it's not even moving the needle. It should come up to about the middle or so with it just hooked up, and I'm not I'm not getting anything. So there might actually just be a total uh, open circuit inside of this thing, but just to see if anything happens, we we'll stick this thing in the boiling water. It appears to not be moving at all. So. Whatever happened inside this thing, maybe just from use, from cycling, it uh, finally gave up and some kind of connection inside was broken. So there you go. That's a problem. So now that we've verified really in multiple ways that that sensor itself is actually the bad part and not the connector or anything else like that, I went ahead and I have threw it in the truck. New sensors all installed, clipped in and uh, connected up. And uh, I'm not going to show that again because this video really isn't a, a how-to video for a Ford Ranger. It's supposed to just be a general about video on this topic for any vehicle. But anyway, let's go and uh, let's see if this thing starts. It should fire right up now. As you can see here, we're cold. We're not moving the temperature needle at all right now. So let us see what will happen. There goes nothing. Wow. This truck hasn't started that good in probably a year. Looking at our wideband here, we're running a little on the rich side, 13, right around 13.0. Uh, but that's normal. The, you know, the vehicle should be choked a little bit when the engine's cold. Now, now it's already starting to go up, almost to normal. Um, so I think we fixed the problem. This is great. Idle sounds nice and smooth, way better than it was before. Before it would be surging and choking, and the engine would be rocking back and forth and doing all kinds of stuff. So. Let's just let it warm up and we'll, uh, we'll get our OBD2 scanner out and just look at the temperature. This time, just to show it can be done this way as well, I've got my little Bluetooth adapter plugged into the OBD2 port. This is the Torque app I use on my phone. The app, it's called Torque, and you can set it up for all kinds of different displays. And you, Of course, right now you can see I've got it for coolant temperature. And we're slowly picking up here as the temperature uh, warms up. It started out about 116 when I first made the display. Since we still got our uh, check engine light on here, I'll use my little uh, adapter here to clear logged faults. That should make that go away. There we go. No more check engine light. Well, I think that's going to do it for this one. We've solved the problem here, and I think hopefully we've uh, explained it pretty well as well. As always, if you guys have any questions about this, feel free to leave them in the comments, and I will get back to you guys as quickly as possible on them. And uh, check the description too. I'll, I'll throw in there, just in case you guys are interested, uh, I'll throw some links down there. You guys can check out on Amazon these, uh, these OBD2 adapters. This is obviously a much higher end model uh, than the little Bluetooth model. This is like 25 bucks. This one's a couple hundred dollars, but it does do a lot more. You can read like 4x4 four four codes and OB, uh, uh, ABS codes. Uh, restraint system, airbag codes, all that. So, so it does do a lot more, but you obviously have to pay a lot more for it. Um, and and uh, moldy meters too. I'll, I'll just throw all kinds of stuff down there for you guys to check out. But that's all I got to say about this. So thank you as always so much for watching the video. Uh, if you liked what you saw, please give me a thumbs up. That really helps tremendously. Subscribe if you're not subscribed and keep watching. Thanks guys. See you in the next one.